My name is Frank Parkinson, and this is me 14 years ago. Although I didn't know it, I was embarking on the greatest adventure of my life, a year-long journey that spanned over five continents and 17 different countries. But there's one problem. I don't remember any of it. I've seen the home videos and I've combed through the hundreds of pictures, which have formulated this great story in my mind, but it never quite felt real. I knew that I'd been there, but not from my own intuition or memory, but from a screen. I decided that I wanted to learn more about our world trip, so I interviewed my dad, who has been very passionate about trying to pass on these memories to me. In a human sense, being married, having children, lots of great things. But the biggest adventure I ever went on was when we, my wife Elizabeth and I, took some of our kids out of school, sold things, and went around the world for a year. Both Elizabeth and I had a very, you know, typical kind of fast-paced, you know, middle America kind of lifestyle. Um, we both worked uh, jobs and had long work days. Uh, we had children and they had activities and school and it was a crazy time. So one of the things that caused me to seriously consider going around the world for a year was what I like to call what time do you celebrate Christmas? His partner walked in and he looked at me because I was the senior most associate and he said, what time do you celebrate Christmas? And I'm thinking, this is a joke. And I look at everyone around the table, now they're junior to me, and so they're all just kind of looking down. And I said, well, actually we tend to celebrate this over a course of several days. And there was just like this long silence and he just stared at me and then he looked at everyone else around the room and they were looking down. And he said, fine, be at your desk 9 a.m. on the day after Christmas. So it's already Christmas Eve. I got to drive all the way to Michigan. I'm gonna be there for a day and I got to somehow figure out how to be back at my desk at 9 a.m. the day after Christmas. And for me that that just said a lot about made me think a lot about what it was that I was trying to do because what I was aspiring to be was that person and yet I wasn't sure that I wanted to give what was needed to make partner Sometimes you're like, oh, wouldn't it just be nice, you know, just to, I don't know, go away for a month. Because when you're working, it's really hard to take more than a week at a time. Um, and that's just because of work. Um, so I think the most time I'd ever taken at one time was two weeks. And so we'd always say, oh, wouldn't it be cool to take a month off and go to Portugal or someplace like that. And, you know, just really relax and really get into wherever it was we were visiting. And so that was always kind of like a little dream of ours. So that dream expanded from a month to a year. The realities of all the reasons why you can't do that or rationally you shouldn't do that um, or all the obstacles you'd have to overcome in order to do that. You know, as you, chi as you chipped away at those, you're like, we can do this. In the fall of 2004, my family finally began our world trip, which had been in the works for months. My parents had stayed up late many nights, carefully planning our trip, and eventually sold many of our possessions and quit their jobs. I can only imagine all the emotions that were going through my family as we stepped onto the plane strapped into our seats, unsure of what was to come of the spectacular adventure. My favorite place was Cambodia. 
And I think because when I was in Cambodia, I felt like the furthest away from my comfort zone. Not that I was uncomfortable, it's just everything was so unique. Uh, you know, the country, uh, you know, underdeveloped country. People were beautiful and so kind and just so happy, Get, notwithstanding the fact that they had been through so much. So I think when I was in Cambodia, I felt like, wow, I'm on a world trip. Keep in mind, I was only three years old. This meant that my experiences in the places we visited were vastly different than my family's. It also meant that my parents had to deal with an entirely different set of problems, which comes with a three-year-old while also traveling the world. We tried to make it as, you know, much of an experience for you as any of your sisters and ourselves. Uh, but you're three, so what do you want? You would pick up anything anything and make it into a sword. A seed pod, a stick in the street, whatever. We actually ended up buying you a feather sword from the Wiggles and a, and a Captain Feather Sword hat because you couldn't hurt your sisters as much with this soft little feather sword. Um, but you, you loved just running around. You, you did not want our shoes or socks. I'm sure it's very normal for a two or three year old, but we're like everywhere. So you pretty much went throughout Asia without ever wearing shoes or socks. You loved fountains. You would, you would, you would like go away from us. If you saw a fountain, you would climb up and just start walking around the water. And of course, all the townspeople would be like, what the heck? Whose kid is that? We actually lost you uh, in Italy. I mean, we lost you in Italy. Like, we're, you have Frankie? I don't, no, I don't have Frankie. I thought you had Frankie. So we just like kind of ran around the corner and there you were like in this public square, this beautiful fountain and you're just like doing this and stomping through the water and <laughs> these Italians are looking at us like, you know, get a grip on your kid, will ya? The best experience from my, you know, from my perspective was 24-7 with their family. And for me, 24-7 with my children. I mean, when you work, if you can have a year where you have, and, and there's good and bad to being around somebody 24-7, but to be, if you are with somebody all the time for a whole year, that's like 10 years of parenting you know, after work a couple hours before they go to bed. I mean, it was awesome. People are inherently good around the world. That's what I came away from. And what I wanted my children to understand is that there, yeah, there are different looking people and they speak different languages, they eat different foods, they, they worship different gods. You know, they, they ride in ox carts. Uh, but they're all good people. And so you're hoping that your children learn tolerance, that they're not afraid of things that are different than what they're used to, um, and that they learn that they can, tr they can travel around the world. And if all they need to do is smile, learn a few words of the language, be humble, and people want to help you. I really appreciate you wanting to interview me about this and I'm glad that you're reading some of the accounts because you can, I know that you were the youngest and you probably have the least unplanted, you know, memories of it. Um, but it was a wonderful year for me as a father to be with you every moment and uh, I encourage you to go places and see things.